Are they gonna shoot missiles or something? <laughs> So we're gonna try the new Logitech thing at the back up. Okay, we we watched the anime movie Ghost and Shell, which you know came from the manga, and then it w went into the series. And it's darker than the manga, and it's darker than the series. And so, but because of the darkness, all the critics loved it because it took anime very very serious, and they liked the visuals. A lot of questions about it can be answered i went online to a lot of good commentaries and fans this is not like i said the original manga's you know vision like they they like wanted a cop more like a buddy cop movie with uh you know doing like in the in the blade runner which japan really liked blade runner a lot now here's what's so angry when you first watch this film is how much the matrix would came out four years later stole from this film like the title Whoa. sequence the whole going around the internet all this stuff was stolen from this film the matrix brothers stole from this film and they'll probably will admit it and there's no been any lawsuits or anything like that because they probably paid a lot of money to be able to create the matrix but and that's the whole thing and a lot of people say why does japan do a lot with the um, anime because like for instance like Metropolis took years and years to make which is one of their greatest anime and they have thousands of artists working on it and the reason is is because it's easier to do the effects because Japan has tried and you think this would be a culture that you think would pull off movies with effects but they they have not really grasped like miniature filming and things like that the Great Britain had the, uh, really the, you would say, capitalized on that. That's the reason why you see Star Wars, all those things were started because British people had done the miniatures filmings a long time ago. Uh, now with green screen effects, probably Japan can jump on board with all the special effects, but it's hard for them to do it because they hadn't done it very long. Because you look at Godzilla and the miniatures, it's like... <clears throat> <laughs> you know, and all that stuff, it's cute, you know. Uh, but, like, in Great Britain, when they started, did Space 1999, they did Star Wars, they did all these, uh, but they had done it for 30 years. They had mastered it, and they, one of the guy who did it, who was the creator of Thunderbirds, and if you guys ever watched Thunderbirds, you'll know the history of how Britain had the monopoly on uh, miniature special effects. And it's something like I said, Japan never got the grasp of. They knew it looked fake. So anime was the alternative. Is like, you know, we've got people who can draw. Let's do that. And they'd hire thousands of animators, and they would take their time, take years to make these epic films like Ghost in the Shell and Metropolis and Akira, which is another one I like to get to see and those kind of things. So they take, they're very detailed, and they're wonderful. And so they knew they could pull that off. And that's what this is about. Like I said, it's darker than the manga. The manga is more light. You know, they wanted like a buddy cop thing in the internet and that kind of thing. So this was Ghost in the Shell, and I know, like, you guys uh, watch a lot of anime, and the anime that you have seen, of course, I don't know, have you guys seen the series for Ghost in the Shell yet? No, but I'd seen the live-action movie of it a few years ago with Scarlett Johansson. How did her body Which was very look? similar to this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think two episodes of the anime. No, did you? It's a lot lighter than the, the movie, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, it's like there's funny parts in it versus this. This is like dead on serious. And they like love, the critics love that so much. So what's y'all's take on this? What did you think? Because like I said, now this is like when I was a kid, this is what, when you had anime, this is what you had to go see. And you had movies like Akira and Wicked City and anime like that. Um, this is pre- I yeah. I really wish that I had seen it when I was a bit younger. I think I would have, like, really, really liked it because of the darker vibes in it and the whole, like, modified bodies and minds thing. I just, I think I would have really appealed to me as, like, a little, a little kiddo. 
Yeah. Uh, I like it now too, though. But I mean, I feel like I would have really been hyped about it. Yeah, and it's it is hard to um, grasp. Like I said, I've watched a lot of commentaries to try to get the, um, you know, what you would say, what's going on here because. This is very complex because, uh, like I said, you're dealing with the Internet before the Internet was, like, really popular. That's what's so amazing. And like I said, there's a lot of things, like, when you watch uh, in uh, Mr. Reeves <laughs> is plugging in, they do the same thing, major plugs into just like uh, Mr. Reeves does in the Matrix. And so a lot of things like Matrix took from this and trying to figure this out. And then, of course, at the end where she looks at the uh, everything out there and a lot of ending, like if you watch the ending, it, it's a little bit more difficult than it is. You might have to watch it again to get a lot of things because I had to uh, get a lot of help with the ending here, too. But like I said... The uh, she goes. There's a lot of internet out there, and this is like 1995. And you're like thinking, what internet? And now you're like, there's a lot of internet out there. You know what they're talking about? It's like all over the place, and that's what they're doing. Is uh, and of course the ghost uh, in the show. Basically, it, you know, the manga is basically questioning does the body have a soul and there's uh, been a lot of good movies that you can go out to West Craven get, had one where a guy give you an idea example about the uh, about you know like I've said you know you know you know I, I hold on to the philosophy I've not been I don't hide this everybody knows my philosophy I believe there's three parts of the human I believe there's the mind, which is your justice and what thinks things out, uh, what prevents you from having sex with that beautiful girl. And then there's the body, which wants to have sex with that beautiful girl. <laughs> and I believe there's the soul, which knows the difference between right and wrong, the con science. Because conscience is, that's why it's called con science. It means the opposite of science. I mean, there's no logic. But the law that's established in the laws of nature is something to be established. Basically, if you don't follow the laws of nature, you're going to follow the laws of others, which is wrong. And so you have to – you develop this conscience. And so that's what the soul is. And the, and the manga is basically questioning, is there a soul? And so that's basically like the ghost in the shell is, uh, you know, the shell's the body. And then there's a uh, there's a lot of quotations from Corinthians about the mirror, and the 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 looking into the soul, like the body being the outside and that kind of thing. And then of course, when you're traveling through the internet, you're leaving that body. And so. A lot of philosophy in there. There's Nietzsche. There's uh, another guy who questioned Nietzsche's Nietzsche. And then there's a lot of Jungian philosophy there. Um, uh, not much of a Freudian there. Well, I guess there is Freudian because there's a naked chick in it. But <laughs> yeah, a lot more than you'd expect. Yeah, and uh, which is I feel like she was not wearing clothes more than she was wearing clothes. Yeah, and 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 uh, Sierra and I agreed the same thing at first. You know, my philosophy was that her my take on that was that she had to get naked to cloak. Is that what you felt? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think. I think it gave that away during like the final fight scene when she like started taking her clothes off. I was like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. Well, that's what I think. But then you watch the commentary, and they're like, well, uh, that's just to show that she doesn't uh, know human, and it's like <laughs> she's not human. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, uh, geez, uh, this is a kind of a complex plot, but it's basically we got a good guy and a bad guy, and the bad guy is, of course, the puppet master. And he's like running everything and he's utilizing people to get their way. Um, this opening scene is really great. I think uh, Scarlett Johansson redoes the jumping and all that kind of thing in her film, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, which is a glorious take on it. Kind of give us an idea. Anybody want to give us an idea what's going on here with this film? Uh, I can try. Um, so 
<clears throat> were basically part of this uh, military, like police sanction. I think they call it Section Nine, where uh, I believe that. Like, yeah, you're right, Section Nine. And a lot of the people in this section have like modified computer minds and bodies that allow them to be like superhuman in a way. So, and they can also like communicate with their partner uh, telepathically. And I guess, I don't know if all of them, but some of them have like cloaking mechanisms and different, uh, different things like that. Even like there was wires in the back of our main character's head where like when she connects, she can like, it's basically like a GPS and stuff. There's just, it's just a lot of different like extra human things go on to these beings really and that's the that's what i know of like the base setup of what's going on oh uh and there's a problem they're trying to figure out who this mastermind hacker is that's getting in and like rewriting memories and uh puppet thought master. processes of different people <laughs> puppet master <laughs> puppet master yeah yeah and uh and uh, so basically, they are the cyber police. That's that's, that's what it is. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if you, you, you if like like that. I don't know if y'all remember that girl whose dad said, "I'm gonna call the cyber police on you." Well, these were the. <laughs> y'all remember that meme? No. Oh yeah. Well, the chick was on the internet and crying and everything, and then like uh, I guess he didn't know he was being recorded, and they were. Harassing the girl, and he's like, "I'm going to call the cyber police on you." Had a big, had a like a Chicago tag mustache and everything. I will call the cyber police on you. Well, these are the cyber police. What did you get out of it, Sierra? As far as like uh, what's going on here, because obviously we got this opening scene, and they're not really connected to the police. They're kind of. Uh, uh, secret organization so secret that the police is, you know, uh, section number nine, they're... I just, um, for the puppet master, I just want to know, like, his objective, because, like, why was... I know he's erasing, like, everybody else's, like, memories, but why was he targeting the prime minister? Why was he targeting her? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm, um, you know, what was the puppet master's motivation? Anybody got that? Get that? The motivation? Uh, yeah, for the puppet it's master. Hmm? Near the end, he was like, near the end, he was like, I went through a lot of work to find you. Oh, yeah, that's right. His motivation was to get her so they can make a internet baby. He was like, he was complaining, saying, like, look, I went through a lot of work for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, nowadays, all you would have to do is pay, like, for fans only page, or is it only fans page? I really enjoyed how even the man had the big boobs. Me too, I enjoyed that. That the yeah. man had big they, boobs? They kept being like him, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, I don't judge. Well, you get older, you get those. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a disease. Uh, well, it's not really a disease there. There is, like, like first of all, body shapes are so funny, but there are dudes that have, like, that crap, and it's like, then they leak milk, too, and it's so creepy. And it's like, because, like, if you go to a gym, I know you're sitting there, e -e -e, whatever, <laughs> but it's like if you go to the gym, it's a little bit harder to do because, like, you know, I grew up in sports, right? So I've seen a lot of naked dudes. And um, you see some interesting and, uh, what do you call it, uh, mutants. <laughs> <laughs> no, buddies are the same. <laughs> like, and the thing is, too, like, if you get into one thing, you know, working out, like, if you work out, some people, you know, like, like when I work out, my shoulders get bigger and which is like one of the blessings that, you know, my family has inherited. You know, my dad was a weightlifter. Right. And so he went in competition, and everything like that. And he actually get this our junior, you know, college where he went to won the championship against the freshmen. See, back in the day when they would play, 
uh, they would have played the freshmen from the universities, right? So he got them, they were, at, they were playing basketball with him one day. He said, how can you jump so high? He said, well, I lift weights. And so the, back in those days, basketball players, they didn't believe in weight, lifting weights because they believed if you lift weights, it would prevent you from jumping. But he showed them how to jump higher by pushing that thing. Ended up, they won the championship that year for their junior college championship because he got him into weight training and nowadays everybody does weight training if you watch the documentary by michael jordan you'll see about that weight training as well and i'm sorry getting into sports but you know i love basketball you know that <laughs> <But> <laughs> all right so yeah so yeah that's right you guys the motivation is the puppet master wants um major yeah the major thanks for correcting me there see <laughs> <laughs> Makoto. He wants a major, little. Major, major. I'm like, okay, I got it. It's the major. We it's the it. major. It's the. <laughs> it's been like 15 times. I'm like. Why is it <laughs> when 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 I was uh, overseas, that you'd have you know you'd got the, um, you know you have your sergeants, your staff sergeant, but the sergeant majors were like the most insane ones. <laughs> I love you. I do love y'all. I, I do love y'all. But y'all are crazy. Yeah, because it's like it's like the D, one day I, I'm not making this up. We're in the DFAC, right? And it's like, oh. and we're going down there, and you know, of course, we got these uh, TCNs there, and they got their head garb in there. And Sergeant Major, he like has no head garb, you know, because you're not supposed to wear a head garb in the in DFAC. DFAC, right? And he gets out there, and he just out of nowhere just spouting out the rules of the defect and just like a preacher on a subway train <laughs> and i'm going and i look it's sergeant major and it? yeah he is crazy <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't ran into a crazy one because like you know i've been saved by all the sergeant majors but like i've been seeing some crazy ones like if you touch oh. the grass you were getting yelled at i'm like yeah. Oh, did I tell you about my uh, celebrity getting uh, yelled at? I was, uh, uh, I, like I said, I went to uh, Purdue University. My buddy was going to Indiana University. And uh, one day he, he, he was out there on the Indiana University and he decided he's not going. He's going to take a shortcut and go walk towards the grass. And he, he starts walking towards the cra grass. And he and, and he hears this yell, get off the grass, that's not for walking, walk on the sidewalk. So he jumps back off the, si the sidewalk, he's like, yes sir, and he's like, keeps on going. And then he looks, and it's Bobby Knight <laughs> from the head coach of the Indiana Indiana Hoosers. <laughs> and he's like, Wait, talk, what? yeah, and I'm Bobby Knight, he was a coach for the basketball team at the time. <laughs> And he like he's like talking to me, he's like, Sean, guess what? I got yelled at by Bobby Knight. <laughs> I was like, Yo, bro, <laughs> like, you the man. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways, all right. So yeah, the puppet master, like I said, which spoilers alert, if it was is after the major, but basically to get there, like you said, uh, you got to build a story. Now there's this one chick cyborg who's got who's got a virus basically i guess you would describe it did y'all understand all that yeah the prime minister the puppet master the puppet master was trying to actually hack in i didn't understand what he was trying to hack in and get but they were like this is a national security we need to bring him in i'm just like why are you trying to go in there man why tell me <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, the the, the I, yeah, go ahead. I, no, I, I was just gonna say I, I didn't really get that. I knew that there was like a virus in someone, and that they were like freaking out, but I didn't really understand. Yeah, and that was basically yeah. They were hacking into this one cyborg, and then they had it torn apart and everything, and um, so it was kind of weird, and. Um, but one thing is like with the um so there's this one dude he reminds me of duke nukem <laughs> he's voiced by oh richard epcar bateau and he kind of like fathers uh poor major because like uh you know he's he's really gruff and he talks like this and everything like that and you know 
and uh, then you got the you got friend zone uh, Togusa, and <laughs> I, that's the only way I can describe her Togusa. <laughs> it's like she says there's a well, the reason why I picked you because you're a family man, and I think it was like yeah, you just knew you wasn't going to try getting your pants. That's the reason why. <laughs> You knew he was like the ultimate friend zone dude. <laughs> but kind of explain these two male characters here. We got one, like I said, is Duke Nukem, and the other one is I'm friend zone. <laughs> Wait, I'm a little confused on which ones you're talking about. Which well, one is Togusa, the that, Togusa oh, was I, the family man, and she was like criticizing for being like very passive. And then the Botuka Her was, partner? yeah. And the other one and was, like, was the other one. Yeah, that was Botuka. He was like uh, more. He reminded. White knight. Yeah, he's like Batou. But you think he was a white knight? Did you say Batou? White hair, and white eyes. Yeah, white hair. I thought you said he was a white knight. White eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like. Yeah, well, he was like to me like the guy that was like a cleanup guy. Like if Major made a mess, he would have to clean yeah. up, kind of guy. He's the guy in the chair. You yeah, know what I mean the guy in the chair, like the mastermind doing all the like behind the scenes. Oh no, no, that, no, that's uh, William Frederick Knight, Section Nine what Department are you Chief. About? But Toe is the guy that looks like Duke Nukem. You know who Duke Nukem is, right? No. Sierra, no, you know who Duke Nickham, right, is, Sierra? I'm fine. No, I do not know who that is. But I'm, uh, okay, I'm the fine. dude I'm that fine. was really oh, buff, and he had, like, the short white hair. He looks like... Uh, yeah, he, I mean, I mean, yeah, he should be Duke. Yeah, him. Uh, Thank you, Sierra, for that picture. <laughs> the first one I got. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. That's one. great. No, no, that's great. But she's right. It's like uh, he's like, like I said, he's like the really big buff guy, and he kind of be like, kind of like like a father, more father figure to uh, to major. And he'd be like, when she got naked and stuff, like in the pool, he like put a cloak on her and everything like that. You need to cover your. He looks like my dad from yeah. one of the Alchemists that merged his daughter and the dog. That's what he looks like. Yeah. Shout but he's son. Fucker. Oh no. He looks like I'm like. Yeah, he he Is it reminds me. Of his, like little things. Yeah, he rem like, like I said, nose. he looks like Duke Nukem. Now he's part cyborg, like he's half cyborg, or something like that. So basically, but like I said, now Section Nine boss, he's sitting there with the three little secretaries on the computer doing everything like that. But he's kind of like disappointed where everything's going at because he knows that what's going on and i don't think he's like telling everybody and that's so funny because like everybody is like assuming what's going on he goes like yeah sure whatever dude <laughs> he's like i know the puppet master once major <laughs> i'd let you know about it, but you don't understand how the internet works <laughs> But, uh, okay, so so let's go by what the critics think. Visually, this was, like, so great for the critics, like if you watched on the big screen. What do you guys think of the anime for that time? I think it's really good. I usually don't watch any anime that have come out, like, before I was born because I can't get into the art style. But this had me entertained constantly. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> What do you think it, of it? Yeah. It, it kind of gives me, like, Aquarion vibes. And I was like, yes. I haven't seen an anime like Aquarion in forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it, that's what I say. If I was younger, too, I probably got more into it. Getting older, like, you know, I've seen Wicked City and uh, anime like that. And like I said, I bring those up because, like, before I, before you guys existed. <laughs> okay, way, way back. Yeah. Not because, to show your age or anything. Exactly. You know, it's like, I see, before I actually could legally go to the Yowie panels without any problems, you guys had to be ID'd. So, uh... <laughs> around it <laughs> and like people say talk about my history of the yaoi voice people and all that and it's like and it's the same thing we say the same thing is that before 
you know, there was no like Sailor Moon. All right, that was totally new. There was nothing like that. It was like Battle Bots and uh, Swoomji or something like that. Voltron was pretty innovative at this time and things like that. So when and so like when they did this, they were like, look, bro, we're not going to do it like anime. And the manga, I don't think he got upset about it. I think he understood that the directors wanted to do it more mainstream. Because, like I said, this is the first anime that was a box office hit worldwide. Yeah. I believe it. It was good. It was really good. The, uh, I like it. You like it. <laughs> I liked it. I didn't like it. All right. So, your guys is, uh, let's go into it. Okay. So, so we, we've talked a little bit. I wanted to talk a little bit, a little bit about the starting out point is how that the puppet master would use people. Uh, and the first person they used was a garbage man who he thought, this is something I did not get. It took me a while to get. He thought he had a wife and a child. And that's the reason why he was breaking the internet laws. And the major and all them knew what was going on. They went after, and that was the first scene that we go with that. And that's kind of like, to me, it was kind of heartbreaking because can you imagine this dude? Is like you're like doing all this. You're breaking the law for a family that doesn't exist. Family doesn't exist. Yeah. You're doing all this. Oh my gosh, that had me real messed up. Yeah. Can you imagine? You're like you're like sitting there, and then on top of that, you realize you're a garbage man. Oh my god. You're so mean. This is good money. Do. I understand that. If I was sitting there, I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> would the guy quit his job? I'd be like. Wait a minute, I don't have a wife and kids. Why am I working this job? <laughs> yeah, if you were just in a bachelor's studio apartment, like they said, I mean, you really don't got to work that hard, bro. It was like... When I saw that, like, the puppet master made that garbage man think like that, I was like... I'm not even going to lie to you, this is going to sound so mean, but I was like, <laughs> yas, puppet master, do what you need to do. And I was like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was like, whoa, Sierra. And I was like... Well, let me ask you the question of this is like, does the puppet master go beyond logic because he wants to mate with uh, Major or does everything make sense to you guys? It makes sense to me. What about I mean, you? It makes sense to me too. If you're like a person of power and there's another person of power and you're like, oh, there's a virus that could take us out. But if we, like he was explaining, he was like, if we merge, then there would be like, less likely that like we would be taken out by a simple virus and our uh, robot genes could move, <laughs> live on. Uh, so so you think he's like making a super race? Yeah, honestly, I think he is, honestly. Okay, I haven't seen the anime, but this movie really got me thinking. There's a lot of thinking like in right. this anime, like what ifs and is the soul tied to the body and right. could the body exist without a soul? Can it exist without a mind? And like, I feel like if these two superior beings were to merge and find a way to continue, because Puppet Master already had the police force like on edge running around trying to figure this out. And like, honestly, they never defeated Puppet Master, you know? They didn't because they ended up merging. So I honestly think that the two of them together could kick some ass and take names. Yeah. I'm, I'm tempted to wonder what the anime is like. Um, of course, like I said, I had a couple of things. I really wanted to see Akira. I wanted to get started on the Ori Sarif because it's a little bit lighthearted than this. And it's hard to mm -hmm. believe, but uh, I just didn't want to go through all that trouble of you trying to find it and get because I just want to go get Sierra ready. But um, and of course, like I said, it's like a one season. Uh, how many sh episodes of the Old Reef have you seen, Sierra? I've seen one, two, Five, six episodes? Yeah, six episodes. Probably same, but I definitely want to restart it because it was a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw all the baby parts. All the baby parts. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> baby part. Pull up my baby. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to win that end man. 
What did you What did y'all think? Okay, okay. So we got the like the effects. What did you think about the voice acting in this? I hated the main character. Uh, I feel yeah. like she had absolutely no like yeah. personality to her voice. I guess that was like the point, but it was still just like I was like, please show emotion. This is just yeah. Too much. Well, and and that's the whole thing. That's the reason like the manga. If you read the manga, there's it was supposed. To, it's more buddy cop. It'd be like lethal weapon meets cyber cops, right? Well, this mm -hmm. one, when they did the the movie, they were like, "Oh no, it's got to be serious," or you know, they're not going to take anime seriously. And yeah, it, it is kind of tough because, but like, I was an X Files fan, so uh, when they did the first season of the X Files, I don't know any any, any of y'all watch X Files. Mm -mm. What about you, Sierra? You ever seen the X Files? Hey, Distro Kid, today get your music distributed through Spotify through iTunes, Pandora, TikTok, through YouTube, through Twitch, all by clicking below. Click on the link below and try DistroKid to get your music distributed today. I've tried it and I've loved it. To her because she acted like Jillian Anderson and they did that. What in the huge bear do you got there? <laughs> He just called your cat a bear. Sorry, he's being really sneaky right now. Okay. So so I was used to that kind of character because they would be... And that's one thing. I, when I first watched X-Files, I was like, oh my gosh, why are they so flat? It's like mm -hmm. no emotion was ever like, all right, we're with the FBI. We're, and I guess they felt that you would be so tired from doing this and burned out that you probably just kind of dragged out like that. Yeah. Um, of course, like they with her, they were trying to establish she. That was the whole thing too in the commentary. They said we got to establish that she has, she's not human, and so like they make this non-human. Because yeah, I mean definitely, if you met a girl like this, you definitely wouldn't be into her because she's like, um, I have no personality whatsoever, and it's like, oh geez, yeah. <laughs> move on. <laughs> What would you talk about? You know, it's like it, they got no personality. But the whole idea is like supposed to give her away from not being human. What about the other voice actors? I mean, um, the one that got me was there's a guy throwing out his garbage who sounds like Don Knotts. Y'all, y'all know who Don Knotts? Would you take this for me? Yeah. You yeah. already long gone. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all know who Don Knotts is, right? From Andy no. Griffin Show. That's what he sounded like. I'm thinking, it's like before Don Knotts died, he did some anime voice work. <laughs> you should check out some of my other anime I did. I did, uh, I did one called uh, uh, Bushi BD, and I'm, I'm a samurai number 13. When I pull the sword out, I'm going, all right, now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> one of my favorite animes, by the way. <laughs> I tried out for Sailor Moon, but they wouldn't hire me for Sailor Moon. But that dude just sounded like Don Knotts. It just cracked me up. I was like, first time he comes out, oh, you did take out my garbage. I was like, it's Don Knotts. He's doing anime. He's like, yeah, after this, I'm going to take Thamalu out to the picture show. Uh, yeah, we're going to do some kissy faces on the swing porch, and it? Let me tell you a little bit about women. I know a lot about women. <laughs> Jack, you know what you do, you know. Anyways, all right. So um, Don Knotts says the garbage man was my favorite. The um, of course, like I said, the the character that I like, of course, is Richard Epcar as Bato, and I just I just enjoyed Bato. Bato was my favorite. He reminded me, of, like I said, Duke Nukem, and of course, if you know who Duke Nukem is, but he didn't have like. Hell to the king, I have baby. to Google Duke Nukem now. You keep saying it. You All right. keep saying it. Like you gotta know now. All right, so while they're looking up for Duke oh Nukem... Oh, my God, he does look like Duke Nukem. <laughs> Doesn't he look like Duke Nukem, Sierra? Oh, my God. Look it up, Sierra. This is hilarious. I feel like I literally just watched this man in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was awesome. <laughs> But yeah, he 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 reminded me of Duke Nukem. <laughs> Duke Nukem. He's probably my favorite of of the characters um, in the film because he kind of like has that father type thing. Mm -hmm. 
going on there. And I think that's a lot of uh, what they're trying to establish, too, is what makes people the way they are. And it's like I said, the philosophy is very deep. I mean, like you can take this and film and actually show it to a philosophy class and there would be interesting discussions on this and like for instance like there's the tree of life which is in every religion there's um all kinds of religious uh, religious aspects of this and like I said whether you know you're you're Nietzsche and you believe your belief or you're not Nietzsche or you're not Jungian or whatever you know, um, I don't, I like the fact, to me, when I watched it, I think it enhanced people who believe in the so, right? But actually, mm -hmm. some people believe, the. I think the manga guy himself doesn't really believe in the so. So, but he didn't want to get preachy about it, and it's kind of like leaves it up for you. What do you think? Because it's like uh, at the end of the movie, which is, spoilers alert, is, uh, you know, she doesn't care much about her body that much. She knows she's not human. That she like literally destroys her body. I mean, just Literally. tears. Her. Yeah, just like. Uh, do you want to talk about that, Sarah? She did not give. She got ripped crap. real quick. She went to go lift out. She was doing everything in her power to. Lift. She did a little violet. She did a little violet. She ripped her body up trying to lift that lid. I was like, girl, don't you feel? I felt it. Dang. Right. Was... Like, it's not even my body, but I felt it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder and... if they feel, actually. Do they have pain sensors? <gasps> now that you think about it, I don't think so. Cause no, that's I, I probably don't... what it was. Yeah. Because she, like, didn't even care about the body being torn apart. Yeah. She didn't care about getting slammed. She didn't care about nothing. Yeah. You know what the thing and, like, that it seems like all the other ones whenever you know how like at one yeah. point they were in like this weird lab and one of them was literally like half a body and he just seemed chill. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, he was like hanging <laughs> half off with the half a body. He, he'd be like, "Yo, seaside cyborg." <laughs> I've seen my legs. <laughs> yeah, I got no legs, legs, but it's all cool, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, too. Uh, I thought there would be a little bit more, and I guess that it's so much like, uh, you know, the puppet master. Was there really technically any wooing to the major? No. She didn't. He was like, I'm powerful. And she's like, that. That's all she needed to hear. Power? <laughs> <laughs> they was. <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> really, that's all she cared about. She was like, "But well, what about my question?" He was like, "Powerful." And she was like, "You know what? Let's do it." <laughs> <laughs> she didn't need to be told anything else. They were also kind of on a time crunch because you know the helicopter was had trying to explode them. Had to get on the head. Come on, they had plenty of time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know what type of babies they would make. I mean, they maybe. already made it. Y'all saw it then. They were basically merged in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the offspring after that. I'm like, <laughs> I, thought, I kind of expected there to be an offspring and not just her as like 12 year old, but I was like, okay. I guess I can vibe with this. Well, okay. well, the thing is, is now what, but now if I remember quickly, quickly. Now, see, here's their thing. Here's what's surprising. And I don't know if you guys noticed it. I had to go to the commentary check it. On the ending there. All right. This is going to be interesting theory. This is going to blow your mind. So if you guys don't want spoilers alerts, you better turn it off right now. All right. There's two girls. What do you mean, two girls? All right. You're seeing, you'll notice when she walks out how different she looks from the other girl and how her voice changes. Mm -hmm. All right. First of all, what we want to know is... And he gave the car keys to one of the girls, and then all of a sudden, one of them was, like, on the rooftop not driving. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> because first you're seeing her looking at the other girl. Mm-hmm. 
and then she's gone because when she gets up you'll notice the chair is empty and yeah. then she walks out and explains there's a lot of internet going out one thing too he said to her that I got this body. Basically, I think it's kind of referencing like orga organ donors and that kind of thing. So he was able to get the girl's body. From the black market? Mm-hmm. So there are two... For one sale? Is that why she's so small? No, 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 no. Like you were talking about an offspring earlier. So there's two girls. Okay, so wow. like I have a question. Okay, so you know how Major and basically the puppet master were merged into that body. Is it like, did they merge into one, or did they merge into like two different personalities? Because at the end she said something, and then like, and with the Major's normal face, and then next it was like the puppet master's face saying something else, and I was like, does she have two personalities, or are they two separate? Did they merge? What's going on in this little body over here? Yeah, that's up to debate because I think the they want you to go say like like if you're if you believe in a soul, yes, this is possible. If it's if you don't believe in soul, it didn't happen. And so it's one of those things where it's, it's up to you, the viewer, to figure that out. It's up to my view then. Okay. I mean, as like I said, you know, I'm a person. Like I said, I believe there's three parts of the body: the mind, body, and soul. And I believe something like this could happen. It's like, for instance, like. I mean, it's like, for instance, a lot of people think there's only physical relationships. And we know through now with the internet that that's kind of horse patootie. And it's like, when I first got on the internet, I think also too, now this is a theory and you guys can poo on this, but I've noticed my maturity as I've as on the internet. But imagine, now uh, I know you're, 40 something and you got a kid who's 15 years old or or let's just use legal age 21 years old you got a girl who's 21 years old you got a guy who's 50. now they both start on the internet at the same time let's say their internet age stays the same their maturity of learning about what the internet is and that's the reason why you get these kind of strange connections on the internet do y'all feel my vibe there mm -hmm. and i yeah, and I think this kind of like understands that, and that's where I'm saying that's a mental relationship. That's not a physical relationship. And I've had girls that tell me when we started on the internet, they did, they were going to psychologists that they felt breakup on the internet just like the same as they had a breakup in real life, like a physical breakup. And that's crazy, but it's the truth. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, how many of y'all have cried when you haven't heard somebody that you had friendship with the internet? I mean, we've all been there. If you haven't, then you're so. Internet. I had a friend that I only knew online pass away a few years ago, and I was devastated for a really long time. It, it is was like I lost someone who was like super close to me, but yeah. I never visited them in my life. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I haven't reached to death yet. Um, it is it, it, it's to me it's like it's so weird when i got in there because you know and that's the reason i had to change things it was just like oh, i mean every day was just a new email and it was like as i got popular on the internet and it just became i mean really weird and it and it was like, you know, I, I seen people that were in my family say, you're stressed out like you're dealing with regular people. I said, yeah, I am. I mean, these are the thing is, and the number one is like, you don't know what that person is feeling on the other side, uh, how they felt. And and it's like, it's so weird. Like I said, it, the people I didn't meet, there's a difference between the people that I do meet. It's like I, I, I sit there, oh, I understand why you like me. You've never met me. But then you'd have the same ones have the, the internet relationships that you knew physically as well. And you're like, but I don't understand why you like me. You know me. <laughs> Who I am. And it's like, but you did have those relationships. And those were weirder than the relationships of the people that you didn't meet. And it's like I knew, well, I tell you, it was like freaky, like I told you about. Like a girl, I met a con. She seemed real sweet and nice and blah, blah, blah. We knew her. I knew her on the internet. But I also knew her physically because we meet at a con. 
And mm -hmm. so when she wanted to invite her cyber world to me, I was like, that's a little too much for me because you know me in real life. I'm old enough to be your father. And I don't want to go into your, what's your sex, um, what do you, virtual world, I guess you would say it. I don't want to go that far. And, and it is really painful because you know the person in real life. And then now you, you, you're, you're not going to, like, let people know that they're into this sex virtual world, right? But at the same time, it's tough letting someone down. You know, like, look, I, you know, Internet, I don't mind talking to y'all. I don't mind being friends with y'all. But I'm not getting into this VR thing. I'm just, no, that's just too far for me. And I don't know if y'all had reached that point where you have to make that decision, but I, if you do, I hope you do it with someone you love. <laughs> and I, you know what I'm saying? I, but it's weird. I mean, it like really messes up the relationship when you know them in real life. Because I, I know her ghost in the shell, you know, but I also know her shell too. And that's creepy. And, uh, and that's what this thing is really... Uh, talking about i mean it's like predicting the future am i right or am i wrong which is really weird yeah i was like i was thinking of how advanced this movie is for our time now i can't imagine watching this in 95 96. yeah it, because no one expected this i mean it's like i said you know i never thought these things you know um and it's like uh of the human part and if you do believe like i said there's mental friendships you can have friends of the mind and you have friends of the body obviously you know physical relationships i think that's the reason why i think a soulmate to me is someone where you connect with all three mm -hmm. and if you don't have that connection i mean these are just theories of y'all don't sit there and say i've got to quote nietzsche or freud to say these things right these are going by experience like, you can have physical relationships, don't get me wrong, that's fine. But if you don't connect on a mental level, I just don't think you're going to have, like, a relationship for the future, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think this film kind of addresses that as well, and uh, things like that. Is, um, did y'all want to talk a little bit about, we got about two, five, ten minutes here, about some philosophy of this film? Of course, one thing, let's, I'm going to get this out and open, y'all. This is a short film. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in it, though. Yeah, that's what some people said. A lot of it's concepts. Real quick, Sierra, what's what's your take on the philosophy of this film? What's philosophy mean? Well, you know, like you know, the ghost in the shell, the whole internet thing. What are we looking at in the future here? I mean, is this going to be reality? Uh, I think maybe, yeah, uh, honestly, it could be the future. Like, you know how they have their sections, how some are cyborgs, some are not, some are half, some are like 34%. I think we would have that. Yeah. And, and, and it's in something to think about with what how the laws would change because it's like uh, there's a lot of Star Trek episodes where they have to decide like the future Star Trek episodes are showing this whole thing about how would you take them as a humans in society and it's almost scary to think about what do you, what I mean when you get to that philosophy of the cyborg part Lucas what do you think I mean, like, how far are we? I think that it's extremely advanced for its time, but I think maybe not the near future, but in the future, it's definitely. If you can dream it, it'll happen. That's what I believe. Honestly, <laughs> you dream it, you at mean. this point. Exactly. Honestly, like, just think of all the different stuff that like exists nowadays that like even like six years ago wouldn't have existed, you know, right. or like. 10, 20 years ago, like, we have, like, you know, in math class, whenever I was a kid, everyone was like, oh, you're not going to carry a calculator around with you everywhere you go. It's like, well, guess what? Now I do, you know? So I feel like anything's possible if you're motivated enough to make it happen. 
Yeah, he's probably saying. I mean, is it a good thing or is it going to be a bad thing? I mean, it's like if. Um... I think it's going to start out as a good thing, but all good things can turn sour really quick if they fall in the mm -hmm. wrong hands. Like if the technology used to, you know, augment these people gets into the wrong hands, yeah, that's it. And then we get into the whole uh, robot versus human thing that everyone always talks about. You know, are we going to get, is the human race going to end up enslaved by, you know, robotic and augmented realities and humans we don't know it's very possible because i mean whenever you start creating artificial intelligence you put your intelligence into it if it starts being able to learn it takes what you know and it excels yeah so i think it could be extremely dangerous and well i mean the thing is is that no job is safe and uh, i'll mm -hmm. give you this because like one of the first reviews i did back when i was doing j-pop reviews was a song that was written by artificial intelligence and so basically it had its history of a songwriter and a lot of the words did not make any sense but <laughs> most j-pop idol songs don't anyways but the, it was literally written by artificial intelligence and of course like right now you got vocaloid singing and you've got all that software so like even the music world I mean, can be damaged. And even though it, the songs may be my heart, my balloon is goes into my nose or something like that, it's still dangerous. But I mean, I mean, especially if, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj, I mean, she writes songs, so you might as well have artificial intelligence already writing songs. But I'm saying when you, I mean, well, I mean, golly, I mean, gee whiz. I mean, how long? It took eight writers to come up with I'm a stupid hoe. And, um, <laughs> No, you is stupid, oh. <laughs> you know, I used to write, I told people I used to put that quote on my desk so it would remind me and inspire me so that I would move on. You know, I just tear down that let it be John Lennon shit. And I put Nicki Minaj's A Year of Stupid Ho up there and it reminded me and it motivated me to do my work better. <laughs> but what I'm just saying is no job is safe. And it's like, I mean... It's like, for instance, it's what reality was me was working at home because they used to tell us like, I kid you not, they would tell us like, we can't work at home because the uh, Internet's not fast enough and blah, 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 blah. And then they um, did all this thing. Now, the worst thing that they've done with working at home is this Microsoft Teams. And it is slow. So it is terrible. And I even got a buddy of mine. He works IT for medical. And I said, he said, house team. He said, teams suck. It's like they should have never connected us with teams because it's like I've got like all these tools I got to use. And teams just I actually when I'm in a project, I actually will disconnect teams so I can do my flipping project. Because it's like you can't do any project when that stuff's still on. And it's like stuff like that. And it's like, but they told us, oh, you can't work. Now we're working at homes. And it's like now we're, you know, all these things they said that we couldn't do and we're not going to do. Or like, or for instance, like homeschooling was looking like as a bad thing. Oh, your kids are going to be isolated. And then now what's everybody doing? They're, they got their iPad. Everybody, let's go to school. <sighs> Pull the iPad out. Are you in your PJs? What does it matter? Where are bedrooms? <laughs> Don't you talk back to me. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> you know, like, what type of dress code do you got for, you know, where you go to school now? It's like... I, I mean, wonder that's, if all the private school kids still had to wear a uniform in there. <laughs> They're still using a uniform. <laughs> And it's like, you know, this is the worst time, and I'm not going to get political, y'all. No one should be striking right now. I'm sorry. I don't care what job you're doing. You're lucky you got one. This is unless you're in the retail business. <laughs> if you're in retail, you're, you know, it's so funny. Like, I got emails all the time from retail. like, come on and work for us. We're starting at 15, 25 bucks an hour now because, you know, it's like, if people, you know, they said, well, now we got to have a guy who makes sure you got to wear a mask. Yeah, I got a guy who makes sure you're six foot away from each other. So they're paying all this money and they're still making money. And then, of course, they're loading up carts and sending stuff uh, via Internet and that kind of thing. So it's like whatever, you know, dude. But, you know, 
like I said, the job thing doesn't bother me because you're going to have to have someone fix the cyborgs and robots, right? So, like, if you get into robot engineering, good for you. You got a job for life. The thing that bothers me is relationships. That's where I'm scared because it's like a society that does not breed dies. And that's where I'm very fearful. <laughs> I'm very scared. But it's like... Because it's like I look at right now, I think I blame a lot of my problems with the relationships and why I'm not married and don't have kids is because of the way society has changed um, and the way the mindset is. It's like, uh, you know, when I was younger, you know, they, they always enforced, okay, Sean, you got to have a car. Okay, get a car. Gotta, you got to have a, you know, got to have a house. Okay, got a house. Got all those things. Okay, what do I need now? Now you go get you a woman. You think, oh, I got a house. I got a car. Got everything you need. Well, we've changed now. What I got to do now? Well, you got to provide them drugs. <laughs> you need to evolve. Well, I'm not going to spend my hard-earned money on drugs just so I can get married. <laughs> I want things to be done the old-fashioned way, but it doesn't happen. All right, so recommend this movie. Anybody want to go with it? I would recommend this movie to... Pretty much anybody. I really like this. Anybody? Yeah, <laughs> honestly. Okay. Anyone who has interest in uh, deeper thinking, like is the mind connected to the body, connected to the soul. Um, anyone who... It was just... It was so beautiful. The art style was beautiful. I think there'd be almost... I feel like almost anybody would enjoy this, honestly. I mean, I guess it was a little bit darker and there was like a lot of violence. So maybe like... Teen and up. Anyone teen and up, I think, would enjoy this movie. What about you, Sierra? I would recommend it for without an adult, 15 and up. But if you're younger than 15, you better have an adult because y'all aren't in sex ed and y'all don't know how it works. <laughs> That's like my video name. So y'all better have an adult with y'all. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, it's so weird that, I mean, I don't know how I react because it's like, you know, like the, the, the movie critics like this. I mean, the first thing was popping in my head is like, why is the chick naked? And then it was like, well, okay, I get it because she's cloaking, right? And then you get on the philosophies like, well, that's not the reason why the chick is naked. The chick is naked because she's not human. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't answer my question. And you know what? They had to sit there and explain it to Scarlett Johansson when she was in the film. Oh, you got to get naked. And it's like, only do naked if there's a reason. Well, she doesn't feel human. <laughs> Not only, and, and, and the thing is, is like, first of all, you know, and I hate, you know, like Japanese nudity. Like you cannot show, I don't know what it is now. Uh, you know, I got friends from China, and the weird time I are they just do they still allow Japanese hoo haws blurred out? And I said I don't know. It's like I knew when I watched Q, which was like all the hoo haws are blurred out, and it's like now does poor little Japanese boys grow up thinking that girls have uh, blurred hoo haws? I don't know. It's like like this one they they're not going to draw the hoo haws because it'd be illegal back in those days. I mean back in those days you could not show a girl's hoo ha. It was a no no. So you blurred it out, or they didn't draw it in the anime. And so, like, when I gotta imagine when these Japanese boys get married, that they're really confused because their girlfriend's hoo ha's not blurred, or it's not, or it's actually. Oh there. I mean, it's gotta be confusing to them. I'm just saying, I'm not hating, but like, growing up, I mean, that's just so weird. That's the reason I don't even fool. I wouldn't even look at Japanese porn because you're not going to actually see. With the, down below the belt and that's like they blur it out it's like what's the purpose you might as well be wearing panties or bikinis you know <laughs> and everybody gets upset you know it's like and i don't you know no we're not even gonna go into that but you know what i'm saying that was their laws i don't know if it's probably changed since the 2014 2015 because they changed a lot of their laws for that stuff now but back in my day when i was a kid anything from japan if there was nudity it was blurred I mean, it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, she's going to take her. She's blurred, man. <laughs> it's Japan. They're not allowed to show their hoo-hahs. But it's weird. <laughs> it's like, look at this, bro. She's blurry. 
<laughs> and they did. They had great blurry technology. It would just follow around everywhere. It was like, <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, you know. And I don't know if the cyborgs. Uh, that was another question too. But we're not getting that. But like I said, you the male cyborgs had mammograms too, or mamma <laughs> memory <laughs> glands too. <laughs> Which is interesting. Like that. Yeah, and it sure it had well, not a cyber all of purpose. them. Not all of them. Yeah. Because like that one guy was part cyborg and he was like all man. Yeah. Well, he's part cyber, but we don't know. He's, you know, <sighs> I'm not even going to imagine Duke Nukem naked. But anyways, uh, <laughs> he kind of cringed at that. <laughs> What's up? All right. Well, did you say Tom's up? I think that's what Sierra said. All right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Not my friend. Leave. All right. So, uh, I, I so she had her mic on. All right. So, um, we're done here. Uh, my recommendation is like if you like The Matrix and want to find out where they stole it from, watch this film because you would you'll probably understand The Matrix. And I hate saying that, but it's the truth, guys. If uh, you watch The Matrix and watch this, you'll see so much stealing. It's not even funny. It's crazy. All right. Well, let's wrap it up, guys. Thank you for joining us for watching Ghost in the Shell. And uh, we'll see what's going on for our next review if there's one. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Who's your daddy?